All right, <clears throat> so we're moving into chapter six now. Um, <clears throat> so this is the last chapter of material. And <clears throat> at this point in the course, we've reviewed all of the algebraic and transcendental functions that you should have learned in algebra and trig. We also, uh, especially in chapter four, we did a lot of extra work on polynomials that you probably had never seen prior to this class. Um, and then we've also, in, in the last chapter, chapter 5, we talked about uh, several examples of relations that were not functions, right? All of the conic sections. Well, not all of them, but most of them uh, are relations that are not functions. Um, and we talked about how to graph them in polar form as well. So at this point, uh, we've reviewed pretty much everything. Um, and so we're ready to talk about functions on a deeper level. And this chapter is probably the best, the best chapter for you to cover... Uh, to help prepare you for calculus, okay? Um, there are three main reasons that uh, I want to sort of take a look at functions on, a, at a deeper level. Um, first of all, uh, we need to have a more holistic understanding of functions in the sense that we need to know how functions behave, what characteristics they have, how they interact with each other, and so forth, right? Um, that'll be very important in calculus. Another thing that we need to be that we need to be really comfortable with is switching back and forth between graphical concepts and algebraic concepts, right? Oftentimes in calculus, there are going to be uh, concepts that are easy to communicate graphically, but they're somewhat complicated to communicate algebraically. But we need the algebra in order to make the theory rigorous. Okay, so consequently, we have to get really good at thinking algebraically. Uh, and graph and graphically in a cohesive way and not as two separate topics. They should be really married in your mind. Um, and then the last thing is that this section will this chapter will help us to uh, do some mixed practice with the different kinds of problems that we have seen um, because usually in calculus you're introduced to some concept like a limit and then you're gonna find limits of a whole bunch of different kinds of functions. You're not going to go through uh, calculus, by, you're, you're not going to go through calculus and say, here's how we find limits, derivatives, and integrals of linear functions. And now here's how we find limits, derivatives, and integrals of quadratic functions, and so forth. You don't go through, uh, you know, function by function. You go through topic by topic. You talk about limits, and then you find limits of, you know, trigonometric functions, algebraic fun like all at the same time, right, in that section. And then, and then you do the same thing for derivatives, and then you do the same thing later on for integrals. So... Uh, so we need to get to the point where we're really fluid moving back and forth between these dip different kinds of functions. Um, a good thing to do to help you review for this chapter would be to review section 1.4 and then uh, get a really good review of chapters 2 and 3. We actually didn't... Uh, I, I grouped the sections differently, uh, so you may not have had a test, one and a te or a test 2 and a test 3, but anyway, but, but definitely review chapters 2 and 3 and review section 1.4. In particular, and the reason that I, I printed this out this time, is that um, I wanted to write out the shapes of the graphs, okay, of the different kinds of functions, okay? So, um, and in fact, let me grab a red pen real quick. So, uh, the shape of just your standard absolute value function is a V shape like this, right? So you should have all of these things memorized, right? I've asked you to memorize them prior to this. The shape of a quadratic function um, looks something like this, right? It's a parabola. The shape of a cubic function is something like this. Okay, and these are the points that I expect you to plot for each of these types of functions, okay? Um, again, you don't have to memorize these as, if you understand where they're coming from, right? Like the point 28, you don't have to memorize that. You just know that when you plug in 2 for x, you get 8 as your output, right? For a square root function, that's going to look like this. For a cube root function, it's going to look like this. X to the two-thirds. 
That's the one that has the little cusp. It looks like a bird. <laughs> X to the three halves. Um, that's the one that looks kind of like this. 1 over x looks like this. By the way, this would be really good practice for you to just go through and fill this in. In fact, you could make a chart like this in Excel or something. Uh, it put the function, the shape, and the points to shift. Fill in all the functions, but then leave these two things blank and see if you can fill them all in by memory. Right, that would be that would be a, a really good thing for you to practice to make sure that you've got all of these functions memorized. Right? It should be like breathing. You should see these functions and know exactly what they look like. Oh, an exponential function. Um, so an exponential function is going to look kind of like this. Um, a logarithmic function is going to look kind of like this. And then you've got your trig functions. Sine, uh, sine looks like this, right? Cosine looks the same as sine, except it starts at 1 instead of at 0, so it looks kind of like this. Tangent. Let me just go ahead and put all my axes in while I'm doing this. So I don't have to keep switching back and forth between pens. Okay, tangent's going to have uh, asymptotes at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, so it's going to look like this. Cotangent's going to have asymptotes at 0 and pi, so it's going to look more like this. Right? On and on forever. Um, secant looks like this. Right? And this thing, of course, keeps repeating on and on. And then cosecant looks like this. Ooh, wait a second. Which way does it open? It opens up here. Yes. Yes, it opens up here down there. <laughs> Had to think about that one for a second. I should take my own advice and do some more memorization. But anyway. Uh, whoops. Shoot, those last two were off the screen. I apologize. But anyway, secant and cosecant. Okay. Um, so again, y you should memorize these things. Memorize the shapes of all of these graphs. Make sure that you have them nice and memorized so that you're ready to go for this chapter. Okay, So that's all I have to say by way of introduction, but again, I think that, that chapter 6 is, is really good, good stuff to help prepare you for calculus.